हेलो एवरीवन माय सेल्फ मिस्टर सुनील दत्ताइन कुलकर्णी असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग वालचंद इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी सोलापुर टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिलीवर अ वीडियो सेशन ऑन इफेक्ट ऑफ ऑपरेटिंग पैरामीटर्स ऑन परफॉर्मेंस ऑफ पेपर कॉम्प्रेशन साइकिल इन माय प्रीवियस वीडियो सेशन आई हैव डिस्कस अबाउट द पेपर कॉम्प्रेशन साइकिल टुडे वील सी वॉट आर द वेरियस पैरामीटर्स अफेक्टिंग परफॉर्मेंस ऑफ पेपर कॉम्प्रेशन साइकिल सो एट द एंड ऑफ दिस सेशन स्टूडेंट विल बी एबल टू एक्सप्लेन द इफेक्ट ऑफ ऑपरेटिंग पैरामीटर्स ऑन परफॉर्मेंस ऑफ पेपर कॉम्प्रेशन साइकिल ऑल्सो यूज ऑफ लिक्विड हीट हीट लिक्विड सक्शन हीट एक्सचेंजर ऑन परफॉर्मेंस ऑफ पेपर कॉम्प्रेशन साइकिल द कंटेंट्स ऑफ दिस वीडियो सेशन आर इफेक्ट ऑफ सक्शन वेपर सुपर हीटिंग इफेक्ट ऑफ सब कूलिंग कंसेप्ट ऑफ लिक्विड सक्शन हीट एक्सचेंजर इफेक्ट ऑफ इवापरेटर प्रेशर and effect of condenser pressure so we'll see one by one the effect of each parameter so let us come uh, discuss first of all the effect of superheating of suction vapor now if we see the vapor compression cycle in the figure it is shown that 1 2 3 4 is simple saturated cycle simple saturated cycle means the vapor which is entering the compression is dry and saturated and at the end of compression it becomes superheated so when the initial vapor at the suction of the compressor that is the vapor leaving the evaporator if it is superheated then this point will be one will be shifting towards right let us call this point as 1 dash so the compression line will shift from 1 to 2 to 1 dash 2 dash so this figure is showing the vapor compression cycle with suction vapor superheated on pressure enthalpy chart now let us see the same superheating on temperature entropy chart ts chart now here you can see the simple saturated cycle is 1 2 here it is the superheating and then again Uh, what you can say isothermal condensation constant pressure condensation or isothermal and 3 to 4 is the throttling and 4 to 1 is evaporation so 1 2 3 4 is simple cycle so and whenever we consider that initial vapor is superheated then this point 1 will be shifting towards higher side temperature of the vapor entering the compressor will be superheated so it will be greater than t1 maybe t1 dash so 1 dash 2 dash will be the what you can say the compression with suction vapor superheated now here you can see that this particular hazard area is showing okay right hand side this hazard area is for refrigerating effect for simple saturated cycle when the suction vapor is dry and saturated whereas when it becomes superheated then we are getting there is a increase in specific refrigerating effect means refrigerating effect per kg so refrigerating effect is increasing but at the same time if we see that as the compression line is shifting from 1 to 2 to 1 dash 2 dash towards right the work of compression also increases now let us see let us think for a while why the suction vapor will get superheated now the reason is that whenever we consider the temperature of heat source or heat load in the evaporator it will be always a few degrees higher than the evaporator temperature and that is why the heat transfer will occur so means when the evaporator temperature we if we are maintaining particular value then temperature of the heat load or heat source which is present in the evaporator will be always higher hence the vapor at the exit of the evaporator that is at the suction of compressor can be superheated or it may get superheated by few degrees but it is important to note that if the superheating of refrigerant takes place due to heat transfer with the refrigerator space means inside the evaporator then it is called as youthful superheating because it is increasing the refrigeration effect as we have seen on ti diagram as well as pi diagram but if the refrigerant vapor gets superheated by exchanging the heat with the surrounding out of the evaporator that is pipeline coming 
out of the evaporator and going to the compressor means in connecting pipeline then this particular superheating is of no use such a superheating is called as useless superheating because it does not increase refrigeration effect so useful superheating increases both refrigerating effect as well as work of compression as we have seen on ta diagram and therefore the cop which is nothing but the ratio of refrigerating effect upon work of compression may increase or may decrease or it may remain same with superheat depending upon the nature of refrigerant or working fluid so it will depend upon the type of refrigerant whether with the superheat cop is increasing decreasing but even though the superheating may or may not increase cop a minimum amount of superheat is always desirable because it prevents the entry of liquid droplets into compressor so for reciprocating compressor it is not expected that the liquid refrigerant should enter into the compressor therefore as the superheating occurs it will always prevent <coughs> the liquid droplet entering the compressor and ensuring complete vaporization of the liquid now let us see the effect of subcooling now here you can see the pa diagram again as usual 1 2 3 4 is simple cycle but when you cool the refrigerant below the condensing temperature from 3 to 3 dash okay then it is called as subcooling and degree of subcooling will be t3 minus t3 dash okay so our expansion line throttling line shift towards the left so again its effect will be to increase the refrigerating effect from from h1 minus h4 to h1 minus h4 dash so let us see the effect of subcooling on ta diagram so on ta diagram here the compression is dry compression 1 to 2 then this is condensation now instead of 3 to 4 expansion in the simple cycle when we you subcool the liquid temperature lower than condensation te temperature that is t3 to t3 dash which is called as the degree of some cooling t3 minus t3 dash then our expansion line is following the path 3 dash to 4 dash and therefore what will happen there will be increasing refrigerating effect as shown by this h line now what is the effect of subcooling in actual refrigeration cycle the temperature of heat sink will be several degrees lower than condensing temperature to facilitate the heat transfer and therefore it is possible to cool refrigerant liquid in the condenser to a few degrees lower than condensing temperature by adding extra area for heat transfer so you can add the little extra tubing in the condenser which will result in the subcooling and therefore in this condition the exit condition of refrigerant will be in subcooled region and therefore this process is called as subcooling now let us see what is the effect of subcooling subcooling is beneficial as it increases the refrigerating effect by reducing the throttling loss without any additional specific work input and therefore subcooling ensures only liquid enter the throttling device leading to efficient operation therefore when we use subcooling the cop will always increase now let us come to an interesting device what is liquid suction heat exchanger if you want to achieve both subcooling and superheating simultaneously then we can use the liquid suction heat exchanger that is required degree of subcooling and superheating may not be possible if we rely only on heat transfer between refrigerant and external heat source and sink therefore if the temperature of refrigerant at the exit of evaporator is not sufficiently superheated then it may get superheated by exchanging the heat with the surrounding as it flows through the connecting pipelines which is useless superheating and therefore it is detrimental to system performance so how we can make it superheating by increasing the refrigerating effect so one of the way of achieving required amount of subcooling and superheating by use of liquid suction heat exchanger now let us see the liquid suction heat exchanger means what it is a counter flow heat exchanger in which warm refrigerant liquid from condenser will exchange the heat with cool refrigerant vapor from the evaporator as shown in the figure now let us see the figure so if you see the figure so the here the warm liquid coming from the condenser exit is passed through the 
pipeline and it is liquid section heat exchanger so this warm liquid or hot liquid will exchange the heat to the cold refrigerant coming out of the evaporator and entering the compressor so this will result in superheating of the suction vapor and subcooling of the refrigerant coming out of the condenser so let us see the ph chart for vapor compression cycle with liquid suction heat exchanger so as you can see here this is the superheating line okay superheating due to heat exchange from liquid coming out of the condenser hot liquid so this is superheating and as this liquid is rejecting the heat it is getting subcooled so with liquid suction heat exchanger our cycle become 1 2 3 4 5 6 1 1 so parallelly we can achieve subcooling and superheating so usually in practice we you, we can achieve simultaneously superheating of suction vapor and subcooling of liquid refrigerant by using the liquid suction heat exchanger but important point to note is that degree of superheat that is t1 minus t6 and degree of subcooling t3 minus t4 need not be same because specific heat of vapor and liquid phases are different and therefore cop of vapor compression cycle may increase or decrease depending on refrigerant use however superheating ensures complete vaporization of liquid refrigerant thus preventing any entry of liquid droplet in the compressor now let us see what is the effect of evaporator pressure so if we see evaporator pressure <coughs> vapor compression cycle so let us see initial pressure is suppose ps and if it decreases to ph dash then simple vapor compression is is 1 2 3 4 4 and with reduced evaporator pressure it will be 4 dash 1 dash 2 dash 3 4 dash okay so when the evaporator pressure decreases due to the friction sorry let us see here okay when the evaporator pressure decreases okay then what will happen okay so here what will happen the refrigerating effect okay will decrease with the decrease i will show this figure so refrigerating effect will decrease and work of compression will increase and therefore cop of the cycle will be always reduce okay now let us see the effect of condenser pressure now again when the condenser pressure increases due to increase in ambient temperature say from 40 to 40 then the pressure ratio will also increase so instead of p2 by p1 it will be p2 dash by p1 therefore and this expansion line okay with increase condenser pressure or temperature will shift to the left so again the refrigerating effect is decreasing and work of compression is increasing therefore the effect will be effect of on refrigerating effect for first cycle it is h1 minus h4 for second cycle it is h1 minus h4 dash therefore from ph chart we can see that refrigerating effect with without increase condenser pressure is higher than with increase condenser pressure and therefore higher condensing pressure will reduce the refrigerating effect per unit mass flow rate of refrigerant similarly as i have told you work done will also be increase okay if you see here higher condensing pressure increase the work done of the compression of the system and similarly heat rejected in the condenser also increases so the total heat to be removed in the condenser also slightly increases and therefore the cop higher condensing pressure adversely affects cop of the system as refrigerating effect decreases and work of compression these are the references thank you